Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and today we have got for you a Game Week 36 Buy, Sell, Keep, Avoid video. The third to last Buy, Sell, Keep, Avoid video of the season. Oh my, we're nearly done guys, we're nearly done with the season, so close. Just a few more vital decisions to be making with our transfers and then we're done. We've got our final ranks and we go again next season. But yeah guys, hopefully we're going to help you out with some good transfer moves this week. Week. If you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like. It massively helps out the channel. And of course, do subscribe if you are new around here as well. But without further ado, let's uh, talk about the rules of this video. So buyers are players you probably don't have, but you consider bringing in. Sales are players you probably have, but you should consider removing. Keeps are players you might be thinking about removing, but I think you should actually keep them. And avoids are players are pretty hyped up right now. I think they are potential traps, and maybe, just maybe, you should avoid them. So there we go. I said that pretty fast, but I'm sure you guys have heard it all before enough times by now. But yeah. Lots of interesting things to think about this week with uh, double game weeks and stuff. I think let's just get straight into it. Let's have a look at some buys. So my first buy is Anthony Gordon. This is a pick I really like right now because we're really, most of us, we're kind of going to be looking to get in those double game week players, particularly those of you guys who are on a bench boost, for example, right now, you are going to be looking to get some cheaper players as well because you can't spend all of your, you know, you know it's very difficult if you'd want to try to spend all of your money trying to find ways of cutting corners a little bit. And Gordon, I just think is the perfect way to do that. I do think looking at these next two game weeks, because remember, Everton or one of those teams that have double double so back to back double game weeks in 36 and 37 I do think Everton out of the teams that do have the double doubles are the team to target so the other teams are obviously Aston Villa and Leicester we know both Aston Villa and Leicester are sitting pretty much mid table right now not too much to play for possible rotation is going to creep in to, to both Aston Villa and Leicester whereas Everton they are on this last final charge to escape relegation and these next two game weeks, it is pretty important that they get it done in these next couple of game weeks because that last game against Arsenal away, when Arsenal are potentially going for a top four position themselves, that's possibly not a game that, that Everton are going to be looking at and thinking, okay, we, we're going to depend on that game. They need to win games right now. They're going to be going full strength. They're going to be playing their best players. And you know what? Anthony Gordon has been one of their best players, if not their very best player this season, and you can pick him up for 4.6 million. So even if we're saying, you know, Everton not playing very well, Everton not a very good team, the fact that they have lots to play for, they, the fact they have a double-double, and the fact that you can get their literal best player for just 4.6 million... It seems like a real no-brainer to me. So yeah, Anthony Gordon, he's been playing fantastically recently. I just really like the player as a whole. He is a little bit prone to diving, I think, at the moment. He is gaining that reputation a little bit. But you never know. Maybe that's actually going to win him a couple of penalties in the box. You know, he likes to get into those areas. And uh, yeah, maybe he doesn't stay on his feet. But, you know, potential for, for getting some penalties there. He's taken a decent amount of shots. He's getting dangerous position. And between him and, I guess, Richarlison, those are the two main Everton players I think you've got to be looking at right now if you are willing to take the plunge on Everton players. The thing is about Richarlison is one, he's a lot more expensive. Uh, but the other thing is that, uh, that Richarlison, if he gets one more yellow card this season, he does get a game ban. So if, he, if uh, Richarlison, Richarlison picked up a yellow card next game, for example, that would mean he wouldn't be able to play in the second fixture of the double game week. And, you know, there's so many there's so many games left for Everton. It would not be that surprising if Richarlison, you know, a player like Richarlison does pick up a yellow card across that period. Gordon, much more safe, much cheaper, uh, and uh, I think it's just as good as an attacking asset as Richarlison, or at least almost as good as Richarlison. I like Richarlison as well, to be fair, but uh, yeah, though, Gordon, really, really like this player, really like this pick, definitely a buy for me. Hyun Min Son has been an absolute fire recently, and for that reason, he goes down as a buy for me as well. And I, I don't think this is a reactionary one either, because I have kind of been speaking about recently about Son and this double game week. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be maybe switching about your premiums a little bit, trying to go for a second premium. Are you going to go for a for a, a second Liverpool player? Are you going to go for like Mane or someone? Are you going to look for a City player? Some of you guys may be thinking about a De Bruyne, for example. I can completely understand why you would be going for those players. Maybe you think their fixtures are slightly better. People are kind of looking at this Spurs double game week and thinking that is it's it's such a tough double game week. Can we even count it as a double game week? And my answer is yes. 
as long as you're picking the right players. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be looking for Spurs defenders in this uh, double game week. I'm probably not even going to be looking at Spurs players at all outside of, you know, your Sons and your Canes. Those are the, the big ones, really. You know, Kulisevsky as well, maybe. Outside of that, it's a pretty much no-go, right? But uh, when I look at these two teams that Son is about to face, Liverpool, a, a team who play a very high line, you know, they, they try and uh, play this offside trap that most of the time works absolutely perfectly. But if there's one player who's going to break the Liverpool offside trap in the entire Premier League and finish, uh, you know, a 1v1 against arguably the best 1v1 goalkeeper in world football right now uh, in Alisson, who's that going to be? It's going to be Hyunmin Son. His finishing ability, his uh, counter-attacking ability, he's a specialist in that role and I think Liverpool will actually be quite frightened of this player compared to many other players that they will come against. Son is actually quite well suited to actually going up and uh, up against Liverpool, going toe to toe. So I, I wouldn't be too surprised if Spurs were to score in that game. Spurs are a pretty good team, generally speaking. Uh, but if they are going to get something out of this game, it's going to come through Son. You, you feel. Uh, as for Arsenal, Arsenal are kind of not exactly defensively safe at the moment. We kind of see that all the time. The, the idea of a clean sheet at Arsenal is maybe a, a thing of the past, at least until we can reset next season. But uh, yeah. Spurs against Arsenal, always a very big game. Uh, you expect it to be a pretty uh, contentious one. Son's got a very good get, uh, record against Arsenal as well, so I think he could do well there. And then after that, Burnley at home, Norwich away. These are um, phenomenal fixtures. Fixtures in which I know a lot of you guys are thinking, OK, well, what, well, we're going for Son. You know, maybe we should be going for some double, double game with players. But a player like Son, you know is going to beat 99% of players in a double game week in 37. You know, the, 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 the options you have in game week 37 for double game week players, it's not amazing. Uh, and Son is going to do a lot better than a lot of those players, almost all of those players, you would say, even in a single game week, just because of the ability he has, you know, the upside that he has, which we literally just saw last game week. It can happen again. A potential captain option for game week 38 as well, that away fixture against Norwich, maybe. Something to consider, isn't it? But yeah, phenomenal form, phenomenal player. I, I really, I really rate Son so much, and uh, yeah, I think he's a great buy. On to some sales. We're going to start you off with Broya. It's not been going very well for him recently, to be honest. He's a player. He's a player that you know a lot of us have in our team, mostly just sat on our bench, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, it's not been going well. No goals, no assists. Even if you look at the expected stats, there 0.13 expected goals over the last five. That's not very good. Only 0.66 expected assists as well. Only three shots uh, um, in uh, five total appearances. Two of those were from the bench, obviously. So that is just very, very poor reading. Broya is just not in very good form at the moment unfortunately Southampton with a, a team with not much to play for now you'd say they're safe well well and truly safe uh, from relegation they're not going to get European football and guess what they have no double game weeks left whatsoever in a situation where some teams have got five games left Southampton have only got three so if we're maximizing our fixtures as well, well it's certainly with the the smaller teams we probably want to be maximizing our fixtures obviously the bigger teams it doesn't matter how many fixtures uh, they get you know you're going to pick a son over uh, a player you know uh, Richarlison for example or a Gordon for example uh, just because son is is you know that higher level kind of thing but uh, with with Broya with these kind of cheaper players we just want to maximise our fixtures, I think, really. And these are not great fixtures at all. Brentford away, I think that's tough. Liverpool at home, obviously, that's tough. Leicester away, I don't think it's so bad. But with the rotation and the form that Broya has at the moment, I just don't think it's such a good idea. And ordinarily, I would say, OK, fine, just leave Broya on your bench. But I know a lot of you guys, again, are targeting bench boost this week. And if you are... You're going to need something a little bit better. And honestly, I think there's a couple of cheap forwards emerging. They're actually kind of bench options. Uh, I'm mainly thinking Puki. I like Dennis as well. Emmanuel Dennis. Uh, Mateta, if you're targeting the game with 37 double. But I do want to give another shout out to Eddie and Ketia. I know I've spoken about him a little bit over the last week. But... They are, Arsenal as a team are trying to convince Inketia to stay, try and get him to sign the ting, sign the contract, stay at the club. Uh, the big problem for Inketia right now is playtime. He wants to be playing football. So I do think between now and the end of the season, and Arsenal have four games remaining, they've got double game week, this week, game week. Um, I do think there's a very good chance of Inketia actually getting a lot of minutes, if not all of, uh, you know, start all of the remaining games. So for 5.5 million, so just a tiny bit more expensive than Broya, you get an extra, uh, you get an extra game there. You get a uh, starting striker from a top team with a lot to play for, a player who's been playing really well. And don't just look at points, by the way, guys. And Kessia has been playing really well. He's been getting so many decent chances and he's a decent finisher as well, in my opinion. So yeah, a, a Broya to Nketiah, for example, seems like a really sensible transfer move, particularly for those of you guys who are looking for those cheaper players for 
for your bench boost? Honestly, I was kind of struggling for a second sell. I think for most of you guys, the players that you sell is very much going to be team dependent. And it's mostly going to be those players who have just been kicking around your squad for a while. You know, you've not really been playing them. They've kind of been your bench options for a while. Um, most of you guys are probably in a situation where you like your team generally. And any player that you sell will come with a certain amount of risk. You know, like, for example, if I was to say sell Havertz, which is a player I would consider selling if I had him, there is a degree of risk when you sell Havertz. You've got double game week this game week. He could technically play both of those games. We've got a situation where, where Chelsea play Watford in the final game of the season as well. That's actually kind of well set up for Havertz. Maybe a differential last game week captain on Havertz as well it is, is a possibility. So, yeah, there's all of these players. Ronaldo is another one who, you know, I would probably be selling if it was me. But actually, if you look at the other way around, he's been in such good form. Basically, I've been just struggling to find out who to sell, uh, to, to, to figure out one player I can recommend that everyone sells. It is so difficult. But we've gone for Cody. I'm kind of singling him out of the Wolves guys, really. But I kind of wanted to use a, a Wolves player here as an example of a player who, despite having a double game week, it, it does not look good. Because I do think there are situations where even if a player does have a double game week, that doesn't necessarily automatically make it good. Chelsea away, Man City at home in a double is not good. It's not good at all. Wolves, I don't think I've been playing that well recently, to be fair. I think they've lost a certain degree of their, their uh, defensive nous, I guess. But at the same time, what do Wolves have to play for? Are they still competing for European places? I mean, maybe just about. Are they really even that bothered? Sometimes it seems like they're not. But um, yeah, overall, uh, the results that Wolves have got recently, uh, the fact that the, the double is just so bad, the game with 37 fixture, you know, the fine that's against Norwich, but then 38 is against Liverpool. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't like the look of Wolves assets right now. But if you've got any Wolves assets still kicking around, I think you can afford to sacrifice them. Cody is a player that a lot of you guys will have. Um, yeah, certainly he could be downgraded to. Um, I've spoken about Tavares at Arsenal, uh, the Arsenal left back, super, super cheap. And uh, Sessegnon at Spurs as well. Whilst Region is out, Sessegnon could be a good option there as well. Maybe not for 36 because of that horrible double. But after that, 37, 38 could be pretty good. Maybe the, this game week, he just sits on your bench or someone, something like that, Sessegnon. And uh, maybe Tavares is more of a bench boost option, I guess. Uh, but yeah, there are some a couple of good, uh, cheap defenders that kind of have emerged due to the um, due to the fact that there's double game weeks. Uh, there, you know, maybe go for an Everton defender. Risky, but there's potential to do something there. That's kind of up to you guys. But yeah, uh, Cody is a player I would sell, and I think there is a few decent cheap defensive options you can go for to replace him. On to some keeps. I'll start you off with Coutinho, uh, just because I I've seen a lot of people are selling him. And I know a lot of people are looking to get players in like, you know, like I say, Son, uh, maybe uh, Gordon, obviously. Son and Gordon, the two players I mentioned in this video. So let's go with that. Um, yeah, a lot of people are looking to purchase a new midfielder and kind of struggling who to sell. And I, I get it. It is really difficult to figure out what players you should be selling right now in the midfield position. Forwards and defenders, there's a lot more players that are easier to sacrifice. In midfield, it's like so hard to choose who you should sell. But one player I don't think you should sell is Coutinho. So despite his kind of poor form, we do know we have got back-to-back -back doubles. And if I'm honest with you guys, I would not be buying Aston Villa players this week. Just because that Burnley away, Liverpool at home double... I don't think is amazing. Uh, Crystal Palace and Burnley is a little bit nicer in 37. 38, again, not amazing. But if you already have those Aston Villa players in your squad, I don't think there's any reason to not keep them for the for the double-double. You may as well, no matter who they are. Coutinho, will he get rotated? Potentially. Maybe there'll be a little bit of rotation sneaks into the Aston Villa attack. I think that is just going to happen at some point or another. Uh, but... Coutinho is obviously a very good player. He is still taking a lot of shots or a decent amount of shots. Um, remember, the, the stats you see on screen right now are across four games because Aston Villa have played slightly less games over recent weeks than other teams, hence the double-double that's about to happen. But yeah, uh, even in this time, the stats are not phenomenal, but he's still taking a decent amount of shots. He's still making uh, you know some good passes, pro progressive passes as well. So... I think points are definitely a possibility in this sheer quantity of game. Uh, so yeah, Coutinho is a player that I would not sacrifice despite the poor form or, or alleged poor form. The double-double, he can do something here. So uh, yeah, keep Coutinho. And another player I would consider keeping is Harry Kane. Uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking a lot of Harry Kane sellers are possibly either thinking of doing one of two things. Either going for another striker, another forward who they think is going to do well uh, in the final games of the season. Maybe that's a Jesus or a Ronaldo or someone like that. Another expensive striker like that. Maybe 
I don't know, Timo Werner maybe, uh, or they just want to move the funds, get off Kane and do the, the sideways swap to someone like Son or go for a De Bruyne or something like that. Basically just move the money and go for a different, uh, a different premium player, maybe in a different position, uh, which I can kind of understand to a degree why you would be thinking of doing that. But honestly, I don't think I would do it. I don't think it's worth it, particularly if you are moving a Kane to a Son, for example, that's going to cost you four points to do that. Uh, four points with, a, with three game weeks left. Is, are you going to make back those four points instantly? Yes, I do really like Son. Don't get me wrong. Would I prefer to have Son than Kane? Yes. But is this a transfer move I'd be willing to make? You know, costing you two transfers, costing you minus four, and at the same time, costing you uh, an opportunity where you could have used your transfer elsewhere. Is this the most effective way of using your transfers? I don't think so. And the reason for that is because Harry Kane is not that bad. I don't think he has been in bad form or playing poorly. He literally scored last game week as well. I mean, short memories are short, I guess. Uh, but no, when we look at these final games, Liverpool, I don't think is necessarily suited to Harry Kane, but Harry Kane's got a phenomenal record against Arsenal. He is Arsenal's least favourite player to play against. Maybe Kane and, and Jamie Vardy. Maybe Jamie Vardy's the other one there. So yeah, Kane, a phenomenal record against Arsenal. So when we look at this being a bad double, is it really a bad double? We've got Burnley at home. That's suited to Kane. Norwich away. Can you imagine captaining Harry Kane on the final day of the season against Norwich? It sounds like too good to be true, right? Uh, Harry Kane always finishes off the season so well. He scores a lot of goals at the end of the season. I'm usually ch chasing various records or whatever he's up to at the time. Uh, you know, Spurs still desperate to get in the top four positions. They very much can do it. It's very much possible. So they're going to be going full, full power every single game where other teams are slightly on the beach, perhaps. And in addition to that, with Harry Kane, you get 90 minutes every single game, which is something that I think you guys are maybe going to like undervalue a little bit but the value of a nailed player right now has just skyrocketed as we go into the final games of the season so 180 minutes in a double 90 and 37 against Burnley 90 in, in a in the game week 38 game against Norwich that's actually going to be really really valuable I think so overall I think Harry Kane is a, a, just a, a, an absolutely fine player to have. I'm a little bit jealous of Harry Kane owners, but I guess you can't have everyone but if you've already got him um, I don't think there's too many reasons not to just keep him Right, let's speed things up as we go to the avoids. Uh, I've got avoid Madison. Like I know people are looking at again double double is always tempting. When you see a double double, it's like let's get on those those players. Everton at home, Norwich at home. That is a phenomenal double. It really is an amazing double game week. And a lot of you guys are going to be looking at Leicester players. I know a few of you guys have, have asked me. You know, should we go for Jamie Vardy, for example, as well? And my answer is a uh, unanimous no. Uh, uh, avoid all lesser players. I've been saying this for time and time again, and I stick with this opinion uh, fully. Schmeichel is the only Leicester player I would consider buying right now, even for the double-double, because although Leicester players have double game weeks, they will not be double game weeks in effect. We are going to see Leicester players heavily rotated still. They it was, And this is especially, especially if they go through to the Europa Conference League final, which they very much could do. They seem like the better team in the tie so far and they're drawing at the moment. We'll find out on Thursday whether Leicester do progress. But particularly if they do progress, there is going to be a severe amount of rotation, particularly in game week 36. Maybe game week 37, 38, we see some st these players kind of step steadily coming back into the team, getting steady minutes. They won't want to injure these players, but they want to make sure they are fit, um, I guess. But uh, two supposedly easy games for a team that has nothing to play for in the Premier League and wants to protect their players for the crucial European games. There is very little motivation for Brendan Rodgers to play his best players in these kinds of games. And we have already seen it. It's happening every single game week. Leicester are a constant source of disappointment when it comes to rotation right now. They are trolling people every single week. So don't fall into that trap. I know the double game week looks amazing, but it really, this one really is just too good to be true. So uh, again, aside from Schmeichel, I would just avoid all Leicester players. They're just not the one. And let's finish off with an avoid on uh, Gabby Jesus. Honestly, I know I put him avoid last game week and I know he scored last game week as well. Sm small L, I guess, for Dan. But he is once again this week the highest, well, has the highest volume of transfers in this game week. And you can say, well, it's been looking really good. He scored again last game week. Yes, he did. But I honestly, I look at this game week 36 double. First of all, Man City's double game week is not actually that good. Wolves away, Newcastle are a good team as well. 
I, it's not like it's not like an insanely good double. I, I have no doubt that Man City will win, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's an insane double. And we also got to think that. <sighs> Man City are about to play in the semi-finals again uh, in the Champions League. That's going to be their priority rather than this game week 36 uh, double. City have a really good, decent amount of squad depth and attack. I think everyone is fit and available as well. Other than John Stones, I think they've got everyone available now at Man City. So... We are going to see rotation. I, I cannot see a, a, a universe where Gabriel Jesus plays both of these games. So I know people are targeting those Man City uh, attackers. But if I'm honest, KDB, Foden, those are the two players I'd be looking at. Uh, I, just, I just cannot see Gabriel Jesus playing both of these games. And even if he does... I think there's no guarantee that he scores in them either. Uh, he's been playing well, don't get me wrong, but this is Man City, this is a rotation team. This is a team who is also playing in Europe. There is so many options in the attacking positions and uh, I think Jesus will be very, very easily rotated in these games. In, in, uh, you know, I'd probably say he starts two out of the last of these four Premier League games, probably starts two. Is that enough for you? I mean, if it is enough for you, then fair enough, but... I just can't see him starting much more than that, particularly as we know that he's kind of leaving in the summer. Uh, they have no, well, Man City have no strong reason to play him un unless they think he's part of their best 11 at the moment. And maybe he is, but then that you have the arguments of maybe the best 11 plays in the Champions League instead. It's really difficult for me to say, and it's really difficult for me to have any confidence uh, in Jesus as an FPL pick. Uh, we kind of saw last game week in the FPL experts video, no one was picking up Jesus whatsoever. I, I think he is a, 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 I still think he is a re reactionary pick, really. And I think if we look at the bigger picture, it's just, I'm just not feeling it, but who knows, maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong many times before in these buy, sell, keep, avoid videos, particularly in the avoid section. Uh, there seems to be a bit of a curse on my avoid section in these videos, I think. So, I mean, maybe a few of you guys just want to look at the avoids and actually buy them. So, yeah, fair enough. Whatever. Uh, but there we go. That's it. That's it, guys. That's the final avoid. And let's, uh, let's do a little roundup. So in summary, um, the normal double game week transfer advice, I think, applies here. So buy and keep players with double game weeks this week and sell and avoid players who don't have a double game week this week. But actually, this game week is a little bit more complicated than that as we are so close to the end of the season. We've got different competitions outside of the Premier League right now. Different teams have different priorities. We've got teams on the beach as well. Leicester, Chelsea, City, they all have double game weeks. But I do expect them to rotate heavily despite the fact that it is a double game week. And uh, many of their players will play just one of the two games, making them essentially feel like single game week players. We've also got those mid-table teams that could go on the beach, rotate players, play youth players simply because they've got nothing to play for anymore. What I'm basically saying is, guys, that just because a player has a double game week, you know, on paper, when we look at what the fixtures are, it doesn't necessarily mean that that player will play multiple games. So, uh, yeah, try and consider that when you're making your transfer moves. And I think that's the best piece of advice, really, I can give this game week. Right, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy, please do leave a like. If you haven't done already, please do subscribe. And aside from that, I will see you on all of the other videos this game week. I think we'll do a free hit draft uh, at some point. I know you guys are going to want that. Uh, we'll maybe do a video up, up just covering game week 36 as a whole, like picking all of the best players from all of the doubling teams. We'll do something like that. And aside from that, it'll just be normal content this week. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Appreciate you all. And I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.